host demo and today we're gonna to be doing another deck tech uh, I'm just gonna be cranking them out here I got so many ideas from this new set a lot of partner matchups but I'm um, today I'm gonna to do a, one of the non partner commanders and again I you know in my intro video I talk about how I don't like the popular commanders I avoid them I'm not gonna be making an Obeka deck and I'm not gonna be making a, uh, a Rami deck or a year lock I'm not gonna be doing any of that I could have I typically wait to see which cards are going to be popular and then when I see that they're not so popular then I make a deck unless I'm sure they're not going to be popular in which case Nostro which is the deck I'm, I'm doing today I just knew that wasn't going to be popular you can just tell when cards are going to be unpopular or really popular some of them it's like up in the air and you're not sure Nostro though I, I could tell right away um his abilities are just very underwhelming as i you know when i did my commander legends review i talked about this you know you you uh storm you know people think oh it's a storm deck right because it's in jeske colors right it's not really storm for 10 you know you, you you cast 10 spells in a turn let's say which is incredibly difficult and then your payoff is scry 10 or 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 you know you, know, you can kill a creature that's just very underwhelming so I just don't think that is the route you go with this card. You're obviously going to want to cast a few spells in a turn so you can get more than just scry one or more than just, you know, deal one damage. Um, so how are we going to go about that? Well, we're not going to do a Joyra or the SRAM, you know, route of I'm going to cast a zillion zero cost things. Um, you know, and then Aetherflux Reservoir, my least favorite card in the whole format, I think. Right, we're not going to do that. Um, what we are going to do, so when I was looking at Nostro, I thought, you know, he has a tap ability, right? And then I immediately went to a deck that I used to have. I used to have an Ink Treader Nephilim deck, right? And obviously Ink Treader is not a legendary creature, so technically you can't have them. But, you know, there's wiggle room, obviously, with, with play groups and stuff. And in my Ink Treader deck, I have cards like Twitch. And Twitch, right, what, what I would do is I would target my creature and then ta untap all my creatures and then it has draw cards. So we get to draw a bunch of cards, right? So you're untapping all your creatures and drawing a bunch of cards. It's a really great combo. And I thought, man, that'd be great with Nostro. Why don't I go that route? So I can cast, and what you can do, right, is... Let's say you just cast Twitch. You cast Twitch and then hold priority, okay? Again, this is not, you know, as I said, you know, in a lot of other my deck decks, a lot of these decks are not for novices necessarily. They're a little difficult to play, and you really have to understand how the stack works and triggers and all of that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Twitch. I'm going to hold priority, targeting my Nostro. Now, Nostro's not tapped. All right. Now, the, the thing that's really bad about Nostro is if you haven't cast any spells, he does literal nothing. He'll tap and you'll do you'll scry zero. Yippee. Right. But as soon as Twitch is on the stack, it's now been cast. So you've officially cast one spell. So I'm going to tap Nostro in response to me casting Twitch. So now I've cast a spell. Now I get to scry one. Right. Then he'll untap. Right. I let the Twitch resolve. I untap him. I've scried something I don't want to the bottom, and then now I draw a card, right? Because Twitch resolves, I draw a card, no straw and taps. Now I can cast another spell, right? So let's say this time I, I cast a refocus, right? Obviously, I, I looked up all the cards that do this sort of effect, right? I cast refocus now, tap Nostro in response, because I'm going to be untapping them anyway, right? Now I'm up to two. Now I've cast two spells. So now I'm going to scry two or deal two damage, right? This is the route I want to go. Rather than scry 10, what I want to do is I want to scry one and I want to deal two damage and I want to gain three life or something like that, right? So I'm going to refocus, scry or deal damage because there's a, a, a creature with two toughness on the board that I want to kill. So now I, I do that. Then he untaps again. I draw another card. So now I'm up to two. I've cast two spells. And, you know, obviously it depends on the amount of mana you have. Um, the, the card that is absolutely perfect in this deck is Tidal Bore because it does what we want, tap or untap target creature. But also you can pay, cast it for free. You can return an island you control instead of paying its mana cost. So that 
cards like that are going to be great in this deck, obviously. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just run them out. Cerulean Wisps. Again, that one only costs one. You untap it, draw a card. Uh, Jolt, Infuse. Jolt and Infuse are both draw a card on the next turn's upkeep, which isn't super awesome, but it's still good because it's going to keep refilling your hand. Those are all the cards that are going to sort of be doing that effect. There's also a white one here um, called Dejeru's Resolve, which does the same thing. And again, these cards, you know, untapping creatures, tapping creatures, like some of these will tap creatures. That's not a useless ability. That can be used to do other stuff. Untapping and tapping stuff is always going to be useful. Uh, Dejeru's Resolve prevent all damage that would be dealt to this this turn. So if you want to just save your Nostro, someone cast Blasphemous Act, untap them, prevent all the damage, and then, you know, now you can tap them and scry one on your opponent's turn, right? So obviously we're going to be casting a lot of instants and sorcery spells. Clearly, that's this is a, a spell slinger style of deck. Sprite Dragon is, is a great one I found, you know, because we need some finishers. We're not going to be finishing the game with Nostro. He's just a value engine, right? Sprite Dragon is going to get huge. Uh, we have Fireman's Research is going to benefit from all the instants and sorceries that we are casting. There is lots of uh, We Dragonauts is one that I just I love that. I just, We Dra what a great name. We Dragonauts, another card that we can sort of, you know, swing in for like six, seven damage, eight damage, right? Cards that are going to be taking advantage of that. An absolute auto include that is an all-star in this deck is Whirlwind of Thought. You know, whenever I cast, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. When I first saw this card spoiled, I just thought it was super busted. I don't see it that much, surprisingly. It seems so good. It's ridiculously good in this deck. Another card that is an absolute auto-include in this deck is Jeske Ascendancy. Another card that is just made for this deck. You ca you're, you're untapping your Nostro. Again, you're casting a spell. So now you don't even need the Jolt or the, or the Refocus because you're just everything you cast right you cast an electrolyze you are untapping your nostro and you're pumping him you're drawing a card off of the electrolyze you know you're dealing damage and you get to uh loot as well jeske ascendancy is so good in this deck i'm building this deck and i'm just coming up with these really interesting places that i can go feather the redeemed is a fantastic card in this deck because I'm going to be targeting my own creatures with stuff. I'm going to be casting Twitch and Jolt on my Nostro all the time. So now I'm going to be casting that and then Feather exiles it and I get it back, right? Um, it, I mean, that's just such great value. Another like Beam Splitter Mage is another card that does something similar. It only works on him, but still you're getting, you're doubling the effect. So now you're getting, you get to Twitch your Beam Splitter Mage and then you also you target your Nostro. Um, Zada, Hedron Grinder, again, I'm, I'm sort of doing that Ink Treader Nephilim thing where I am, I'm just going to draw, it's not as good as Feather where I keep getting it back, but I'll cast Twitch on, on Zada, and then it hits all my creatures, right? And I get to draw all those cards and untap all my creatures. I mean, it's just such great value. So those cards are auto-includes. Thousand Year Elixir, of, uh, you know, as I said, there's a lot of cards in um, Commander Legends that have tap abilities. This card it should be in all of them. You know, Obeka, Arami, Gen, all have tap abilities. You want to be using them right away. And then also, don't forget, you can untap that creature and use their ability again. That's so good. For one mana, Thousand Year Elixir should be in all those decks. It's obviously an auto-include in this deck. Being able to use, you know, have Swift Foot Boots, not Lightning Greaves. Lightning Greaves is a no-no because you want to be targeting your Nostro all the time. Swift Foot Boots also, you know, giving uh, your Nostro haste so you can use them right away is great. Um, another one I found that, this is another card that should be in, in, a, in a few decks that, and it's not, is that's Nico Tay. Uh, this is great. So now I'm turning that, you know, very underwhelming deal damage ability into a right so th then th this is the next route i want to go i want to now take his three abilities and make them you know pump them up make them so that it's not just scry one it's not just deal one damage so now i'm going to deal one damage to a creature that creature is going to get tapped down and it's going to stay tapped down so now if there's no you know if i can deal one damage and tap someone's giant creature someone's ulamog down so now it can't attack that's huge value 
and they stay tapped as long as as Nikote is in play. If the creature, if Nostro dies, they still stay tapped. They have to get rid of the Nikote. This is a great card that should be in a lot more decks. Let's improve that Scry. Hey, how about Elegith? Elegith is an obvious auto include in a Nostro deck. Um, you know, and now instead of scrying two or scrying three, I'm drawing three again. So I'm taking that underwhelming ability and I'm turning it into a really good ability. How about instead of gaining one or two life, again, I'm drawing cards with it. Draw Skull Reaver. Draw Skull Reaver is a card that I think probably a lot of people wouldn't think to put in this deck. But now, every time I use my Nostro, why bother scrying when I can just draw all those cards? Other than that, you know, uh, I'm doing a lot of the typical things in Spellslinger decks. Uh, I have As Foretold, again, because being able, you know, another super underrated card that you don't see in in, <laughs> in EDH decks nearly enough. Uh, being able to cast stuff for free is going to be super good. We're going to we're going to want to do that a lot. So that that's an auto include in this deck. I, I went with cards that are more casting instants and sorceries rather than because I'm leaning towards more non-creature spells. So I'm using Tithe, for example, as opposed to, you know, Knight of the White Orchard or whatever, you know, Weathered Wayfair, whatever you might typically use. Uh, you know, I'm going to use a card like Tithe instead uh, or Gift of Estates instead because it is an instant or sorcery and I want more effects like that. Uh, Shark Typhoon, again, you want a, you want finishers in this deck. Shark Typhoon is a good finisher for this deck because you're just going to be cost casting lots of spells. Monastery Mentor is another good finisher for this deck. Um, Kaikar Winds Fury. Again, you're just going to be casting lots of non-creature spells. Elsha also. These are two cards that are just, you know, obviously they are the, the commanders. The decks that they pilot are going to be it's very similar decks. So they just the synergy is just going to be really, really good in this deck. One of the main reasons why I made this deck is because there's a card I've been wanting to use for a long, long time that I think is really good that works well in this deck, and that is Cracklebur. <laughs> uh, this is a fun, interesting, funny card that I really like in this deck. Again, I'm going to be... I want ways to untap my Nostro, and this is a way to do it. So the, the ability tap two untapped red creatures you control, and then the other ability is untap two tapped blue creatures you control. So it, you, what you need is two creatures in play that are both blue and red. You tap all three. You tap your Crackle Burr and your other two creatures, because they're both red creatures, and then you can just right away untap all three of them. And they're all blue, right? So say I have Nostro and I have Kaikar out. I'm going to tap all three and deal some damage and then I'm going to untap all three and bounce a creature and then my Nostro is untapped and then I get to use my Nostro. Also, if my Nostro is tapped, this is a way I can untap it, right? Um, I can even maybe attack with my Crackle Burr and then use its untap ability, right? So just a really neat, silly, interesting card I've been wanting to play for a, a long time and it works really well in this deck so to finish things off i gotta put some storm cards in here i put grape shot in it can just be really good if you if you cast you know five or six spells in a turn and also uh, i put temporal F fisher in you can put mind's desire in here too i was thinking about it i took it out it I, it's just a little too random for me it, it also would work good in this deck casting th that storm for three or four you know i like temporal fisher because i can return five or six things to someone's hand and it can be like a finish so I really like that too. So if you want to put a few storm cards in the in the deck, that's fine. I wouldn't go too crazy with it. Again, the idea is the value of untapping and tapping Nostro. And I'm going to scry a little bit. I'm going to gain a little life. I'm going to, you know, I like the options. I love cards in EDH that give you the option of, I can do this. Okay, well, there's no creatures on board I can kill, so I'm just going to scry. Or I'm just, you can always gain life. Gaining life is always good, right? So being able to just say, okay, well, I'll gain three life. Good, great. You can even go more of the life gain route with Nostro if you want. And then I have the usual suspects, right? Obviously in this deck, I like Reality Shift. I always lean towards exiling creatures. I just hate Avacyn so much. And then, you know, Teferi's Protection, obviously. I, I got a few counter spells. Counter Flux is my favorite when I'm playing blue and red. Um, Vandal Blast is an obvious include. Um, I like Dovin's Veto. You know, again, if if I'm in blue and white, that that's just is my preferred choice for counter spells because I'm usually only going to be countering non-creature spells. And then I I need some ways to protect my commander because 
this is really one of those decks that leans toward, you know, it's it's not a monolith commander, but it's definitely leaning in that direction where it doesn't do a lot if your your uh, commander isn't in play. So I got Selfless Spirit. Um, I got Valorous Stance, another great modal card that is super underrated and needs to get played more. I have Boros Charm. I have Flawless Maneuver because my commander is always going to be in play anyway. And I have Bastion Protector. So I got a lot of ways to protect my commander because I really, really wanted to survive. And then last but not least, I'll just say I, I also will be casting a lot of spells. I'll be almost every turn, I'll be casting more than one spell. So I think Jory N is an auto include in this deck just because I'm almost always going to be casting two spells on my turn. So it's just a free draw. And then Pyromancer's Assault, I also like. Um, for the same reason, I'm going to be casting two spells almost every turn. And then that extra two damage, then I can go, okay, well, I've cast two spells. There's a creature with four toughness on board. Now I can kill it because I can deal two with the Pyromancer's Assault and then two more with Nostro, right? So I, I like that about it too. Yeah, I mean, that's about it. What lands you put in, there's no real lands in this deck that really matter. Everyone does their own thing. You know, if you have a Tundra, have fun, throw your Tundra in there. Some people do, some people don't. Some people have Arid Mesa, some people don't. And then removal, you can do what you want there. You can flesh out that part. That's not going to change the deck much. I've already made it clear how much I like removal. Removal wins games. That's a big uh, doctrine with me. Do whatever you want, though. If you want less removal, more, you can flesh those things out yourself however you like. So, um, yeah, that's that's about it. I, I hope you enjoyed this deck deck, and I, and I hope you enjoy playing the deck. Thanks for tuning in.